Hey guys, Preston here. It is Whiteboard Wednesday, and I hope to add some value to you today. So I was listening to Phil M. Jones. If you know uh, Phil M. Jones, you know that he is a master influencer, and he's actually dedicated his life to understanding the words and the language that moves people into action faster with us than without us. And of course, he's also the author of Exactly What to Say, and of course, the book um, Exactly What to Say for Real Estate Agents. And so he was on this podcast, in fact, it's the Millionaire Real Estate Agent podcast that you should be listening to, and he said something that was really poignant and it actually sort of made me stop in my tracks a little bit. He said, how many people are in our database that we're referring to as our past clients, and yet because we don't have any close relationship with them, they're not out in the world referring to us as their real estate agent, right? Meaning that we run around telling people how many people we have in our database and how many past clients we have, and we brag about that, and yet, if you really ask them who's your realtor or if they have an opportunity to say who their realtor is, would they say your name? Because the truth is, is that we probably haven't done a really great job of fostering closer relationships and really uh, pouring into that relationship such that we have a ironclad rapport with our past clients and our entire database at large. And so, there's a number of scripts out there, I'm sure you've heard these, that have basically said, if you haven't done a really good job of following up with people in your database, what you should do is you should just pick up the phone and you should say, hey, John, it's Preston. I'm just following up. I'm just circling back. Hey, by the way, I just want to apologize for not keeping up with you. And the truth is, is that he says that when you use those words, you are forcing reciprocity when the reality is, is that they know that you're actually not that sorry, because if you weren't that sorry, right, you would have just maintained a great relationship with them. So instead of trying to force reciprocity, he says that you should follow the model, and actually for a lot of dialogues, what he calls is OFQ, which is a uh, sort of polite opening, if you will, a mutually agreeable fact, okay, and then down here, an easy to answer question not a hard to answer question. In fact, actually what he says is, is that just notice the number of times that people say, how are you? And the truth is, is that you lie to people and you say, oh, I'm wonderful, I'm this, I'm that, when the reality is, is that you may not be wonderful that day, okay? But again, it lacks um, authenticity. So if you follow this model, OFQ, polite opening, mutually agreeable fact or facts, and an easy to answer question, it'll make the process way more smooth. And so let's, uh, let's give an example, okay? So again, John's in your database. If you haven't followed up with John, it's been 13 months since you all helped him or his family purchase a home. Hey, John, it's Preston. <laughs> Use your own name. Okay. Hey, John, it's Preston. Hey, listen, it's been 13 months since I was able to partner with you all to help you purchase that home at 123 Park Street. Tell me, are you still living in the home? Notice, polite opening, mutually agreeable fact, it's been 13 months since I helped you, partnered with you. Easy to answer question. Are you still living in the home? Of course, they're probably likely gonna say yes, and chances are you already know that they're still living there. But you could also just say, hey, well, listen, I'd love to you know, catch me up to speed. Tell me what's been happening in your world. Meaning that you've already introduced the fact, it's, you've already said, stated the obvious, that it's been 13 months, but instead of apologizing for something that you're really not truthfully sorry about, this gives them the opportunity to get jump right back into the relationship where you left off. And the truth is that if you're gonna add value, then just add value. One thing that you might also inject into the facts is, right, there's been a lot of changes both in, or in our real estate industry. And I'd love to catch you up on things that have happened both locally and nationally. When do you have about 10 or 15 minutes where I can catch you up to speed, right? Let the conversation just sort of simmer and marinate and happen naturally versus trying to force reciprocity around something that you're not that genuine about. So here's the point. I hope that that model really helps you today, but I also wanted to mention that Keller Williams has actually partnered with Phil M. Jones because we all know that real estate agents have a lot of opportunity for growth inside of maintaining closer, more fruitful relationships with their database. And as I also mentioned, Phil is the master influencer and he's a master on the art of language. And so Phil has actually partnered with, with Keller Williams at this point. And with all the changes that are happening in our industry related to NAR and Sitzer Burnett and all of that, he's actually gonna be hosting um, a class, it's actually for two days. It's called Critical Conversations in Real Estate, all right? That is going to take place on June 24th. I think it's also taking place on June 27th. We'll update you on that. 
It's a nine to five course. It's gonna cost $249. The investment is $249 and it's facilitated by Phil directly. You will actually get a booklet for this course as well. And here's what I would say. Phil actually in his day-to-day -day life does not offer this course for less than $5,000 per person. We are getting an extraordinary opportunity here at Keller Williams because of our size and scale where Phil is going to offer this course to all KW agents with the booklet. In fact, the booklet alone is usually $1,500. He will do that for $249. We will not be doing this on a market center level. We will not be doing this as a watch party because what Phil says is you really need to take this course in the privacy of your own home so that you can really focus and be intentional and more purposeful about this conversation and all that's going to happen and that you're going to learn through it. So I trust that that was valuable today. You guys have a great rest of your week and I'll see you next week for Whiteboard Wednesday.